This is SOLIDWORKS tutorial lesson 2.4. In this video we're going to finish up the pulley by using the fillet and extruded cut tools. Let's start with the fillet tool. So we'll go ahead up here to the command manager and click on the fillet. In our property manager we can see our options. Let's see the radius. We'll go and look at the drawing. The radius will be 0.25 for all of these edges here. There's four of them and they all need to be the same. So if we go back to SOLIDWORKS, we'll have all of them be 0.25. And then in this field here, it's looking for edges, loops, faces. We're looking for edges. So we'll go ahead and click these edges here, one there, one in the middle here. Hold the middle mouse button and drag to see the other side. And we'll go ahead and put these other two in. We want all four of those edges to be in this list here with this instance of the fillet so that they're linked. And if we click the check mark, then it goes and puts all of those four in there. Now if we were to go back and left click on the fillet and edit the feature, we'd have access to all four of those edges. Let's hit the undo button and see what happens if we don't link those up like that. So I just put control Z. I'm going to click on the fillet and only click on two of those. So that one and that one. And then let's say that I'm thinking it through right now. I'm, I haven't really planned ahead. And I'm going to click on the fillet tool and do the same thing for these other two. And accept it. When we do it that way, we have two different instances of the fillet in our design tree. One for one side and one for the other side over here. If we were to click to modify that, so to edit that feature, and say we wanted 0.2 instead of 0.25, that would only do one side instead of all four. That's why it's important to know what you want linked and what you don't want linked. So let's go ahead and hit Control Z one more time. It will be a few times to get rid of all those fillets. All right, now we're back to the beginning and we can go ahead and do the fillet tool, change that back to 0.25, and click on all four of those edges. One, two, three, four. All right, and we'll go ahead and accept that. All right, the last thing we need to do is the extruded cut tool. So let's go ahead and click on the extruded cut. It's asking for an existing sketch or a plane to sketch on. We haven't drawn the sketch yet, so we'll have to go ahead and, and select that. Okay, this one's important to know which face we want to draw on, which plane we want to draw on. So if we line ourselves up, we can see that if we draw on the right plane, like before, that wouldn't work because that's going the wrong way. The top plane won't really work either. The front plane might work. Oop, I accidentally clicked on it. So go ahead and exit the sketch and we'll actually do that again. Extruded cut tool, picking a plane. So that front plane is in the direction we want to do, but that front plane is actually right down the middle of our part. So remember that the extruded cut will go in one direction or there's different options. So let's go ahead and pick that front plane and we'll go through those different options. So pick that plane and do a normal two view. And if we look at our drawing, we have a detail view. This is called detail B, which is what's in this circle from this front view. We can see that that keyhole is 0.25 wide here. And the top of that is 0.6 inches away from the origin line or the middle. So let's go back to SOLIDWORKS and we're going to draw that in there. So we'll zoom in a little bit. We have our origin here and we're going to draw a rectangle. And this is a center rectangle which means the first click will be the center and then the second click will be one of the corners. If we were to choose the corner rectangle, the first click would be one corner and then the second click would be another corner. Alright, so we're doing a center one so we'll have the center be right above the origin and we'll go ahead and go up some distance and we'll accept that. Okay, so you can see that there are relationships set up. We've got coincident relationships and horizontal and vertical relationships. And this square can pretty much move anywhere. This rectangle can. So we want to move it above the origin. So we'll go ahead and make a vertical relationship between the center of that rectangle and the origin. So I control clicked on both of those and I'm clicking vertical. So now when we move this around 
let's see, let's be able to click on it. It only moves up and down, but not left and right. But we can see that the rectangle can still change in size. So let's go ahead and put dimensions on there as well. So remember that this one is 0.25 wide. And then from the origin to the top of this is 0.6. Okay, we can do a dimension between the origin and that, but that wouldn't really do everything because that bottom line would still be underdefined. So let's hit escape. We actually want to make a relationship between this line and the origin to make them coincident. And we'll hit accept and put a dimension now on this line over here. And this is the one that we want to be 0.6. And we'll accept it. So we can see with those two dimensions and the relationships that we added that it's fully defined. We could add different different relationships instead of that coincident with the mid midpoint of this rectangle there, but this one works well. All right, so now we can exit the sketch, and since we already clicked on the extruded cut tool, it will pop it up in the property manager. And let's change our view, go over a little bit. You can see that that extruded cut is coming off of the front plane going backwards. If we increase the length of that, we can see that it can extend out. We want that hole to go all the way through the pulley. So usually when we do that, we change from blind distance to through all. But you can see that that didn't do it. It went through all of it from that sketch plane outward, but it's not cutting this way towards us. It's only going to kick or cut that other part. So one thing that we could do is we can change this to mid-plane, have it go both directions, and then increase the distance. So that's going out from the sketch plane in both directions, the same distance, to have a total distance of 2.7 inches. But in this setting, you can't go through all both ways. It has to go a certain distance. So this does better, because we could cut through all the material, but it doesn't do everything. The reason why we want to cut through everything is because if we want to change the size of our pulley later, we want these settings to automatically adjust and work with our new piece. If we set this to be barely two inches to cut through all the material, and then we change the thickness of this to be actually three inches, that cut is going to stay at the two inches and not adjust with the size of our part. So let's go back to through all for this one and look at this feature here, which is the direction two. If we click that and do another through all, we have it going both directions, so in the first direction it's going through all, in the second direction it's going through all. If we were to change this one, we could have this go to a certain distance out that way. But instead we want it through all both ways. So that's actually really good. That will cut out everything. So if we accept that, then we have our keyhole all the way through. There's one more way that we could solve that problem. Let's hit Control z and go back into that cut tool. We'll go ahead and pick our existing sketch and do a through all in one direction and accept it. So you can see that that isn't cutting this way, but it did cut this side halfway through. What would have happened if we would have drawn our sketch on this plane of this face rather than the front plane? One thing that we can do is we can go to our sketch in the design tree and left click it. We have the options to edit the sketch and edit the sketch plane. If we click on edit the sketch plane, we can say that we chose the front plane, but we now want to choose this front face here instead. So we'll click that and accept it. That moves the sketch back to be drawn on the different plane. And now you can see that that cut extrude that we did through all in that direction works because it's starting on this plane here and going through the whole part. So it's good to think ahead and think what you'd want to use to make the tools simpler to use and what would be the easiest to modify later on. So there is the pulley. It's all the way done. It has the main base. It has the groove. And it has these fillets and the extruded cut.